What kind of uh, Brexit are we looking at now in the light of the uh, hung parliament? Well, I think the important thing to remember is that both the Labour Party and the Conservative Party were very clear that uh, we should leave the single market, uh, but that we should uh, also put in place a really comprehensive free trade agreement. So we will be looking for the closest possible uh, customs union. Uh, I think the fact that both the Labour Party and the Conservative Party, which is the overwhelming majority of uh, MPs in Parliament are now very clear they'll respect the referendum result and leave uh, is a good sign and uh, it's quite possible actually that we can uh, you know, achieve some kind of consensus about the type of Brexit that we uh, should deliver and the Prime Minister starts his negotiations next week. Uh, we've now obviously got a new team uh, in uh, DEFRA and we will be uh, working to implement the kind of um, gradual transition, the kind of gradual change that uh, we outlined in our manifesto. So you say customs union and free trade agreement, they are two different things. I take it that you mean we're going to leave the customs union and have a free trade agreement? Well, look, I don't think we should get uh, hung up on uh, terms and names that exist now. Um, the crucial thing is, as the Prime Minister made clear, actually at the beginning of this year in, her, um, in the big speech that she gave, the Lancaster House speech, uh, it's very clear that we want a bold, ambitious, comprehensive customs agreement. Um, and uh, that can be uh, you know, a very close agreement that enables us to have the kind of close trading relationship that we want with our European neighbours. Not a lot has happened since the, uh, the referendum almost a year ago. Uh, talks are about to begin. What's the priority going to be in terms of agriculture for those talks? Well, I don't agree that not a lot's happened. Not a lot's happened in terms of the negotiations because they've not formally started. Uh, but over the last year, we in DEFRA have done an enormous amount uh, of analysis uh, and detailed work uh, to look at some of the issues on agriculture, looking at all of the sectors, uh, looking at um, all of the issues in the uplands, looking at uh, those that would be affected by trade, looking at all the regulation that we have to uh, bring across. And so a great deal of work's gone into uh, putting together the Great Repeal Bill that will bring across in the first instance uh, that uh, EU legislation. And I've also in the last year set out some quite detailed ideas around how we might uh, reform the uh, agriculture policy we've got uh, in a transitional way over a period of time but uh, gradually move away from an area-based system to better targeted support, helping farmers manage risk, helping farmers invest for the future to improve their productivity and of course improving uh, our approach to the uh, farmed environment and having agri-environment schemes that are better tailored uh, to local areas. These are areas and uh, things that we've done a, a lot of detailed work on in DEFRA and uh, I'm pleased that we're now back to start the process of the negotiation and uh, once we leave we can obviously implement that new policy. One of the pressing issues facing many farmers is uh, availability of labour. We're kind of coming up to harvest, it's already happening in, in, in terms of some sectors. Are you going to guarantee the uh, rights of uh, European workers to remain in the, in the UK? Well, look, the Prime Minister herself has been very clear, um, right actually from the, the point that she uh, became Prime Minister, that she wants to respect the rights of European uh, people who are already here, living and working in the UK, and she expects that to be reciprocated. And I think this will be uh, an early matter for the negotiations for all sides, actually. Uh, they want to provide people with that reassurance, and I suspect that this is something that can be resolved uh, quite early on. And then in, obviously, longer term, uh, you know, we'll be looking at issues such as uh, work permits and how we can make sure that we have the labour that we need uh, while of course also having uh, an approach that's around very much controlled migration. You're doing a lot of work at DEFRA. We, we were interested to see that uh, one of the adverts for, for uh, a civil servant to come and help in the department. Uh, I think it said that uh, agricultural experience or experience of the, the food and farming sector was not essential but it was helpful. Um, it, it would be more helpful if it was essential wouldn't it? Well uh, I think uh, look I'm, I'm somebody who's got uh, agricultural experience, went to agricultural college, spent 10 years in the industry um, and again for my role that's helpful but not essential uh, and I think uh, all we're really saying in these types of things is that it's, it's helpful and we encourage anybody with farming expertise obviously to come forward but equally we don't want to rule out somebody who might have fantastic talents and an ability uh, to grasp issues very quickly uh, and indeed uh, you know, uh, could have a very important role to play in policy design. We don't want to discourage them from from, uh, from applying. And we always try within DEFRA and in, in our agencies like the RPA uh, to get people on board who've got direct farming experience because I think it helps us uh, in our dealings with, with the agricultural industry at large. 
And in terms of um, the farming industry, there are a lot of demands being made of the government. We want this, we want that, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, is the farming industry providing you with enough solutions to uh, obtain those goals, or, or do you, are you getting enough input from farming leaders, for instance, or, or could yes. they be doing more? I think actually we're getting a lot of quite fresh thinking uh, now that we've, uh, we're a year on from the decision to leave the European Union. I think initially uh, some people felt apprehensive and there was a sense of shock in some of the uh, farming unions, but what I've been really encouraged by is that since uh, probably last autumn, all of them, whether it's the CLA and the uh, NFU and TFA, they've all actually been doing some fresh thinking about what future uh, farm policy could look like, how we can uh, support the growth of our, our exports, how we can better market ourselves, how we can add value to our uh, produce, how we can improve uh, productivity. There's a lot of quite interesting uh, thinking starting to emerge and I really want to harness that and work with everybody, including the industry and all the NGOs, uh, as we design a new uh, agriculture policy that's fit for purpose.